Hello and welcome to Out of the Fog. I'm Karen Hager. Each week at this time, we gather for a spiritual conversation with enlightening guests, and I'm glad you're here. You can learn more about my work as an intuitive and teacher at karenhager.com. And if you like podcasts and puzzles and puppies, you can follow Fog City Psychic on Instagram. Everyone loves Maisie the puppy. What kind of monster wouldn't love Maisie the puppy? So you see pictures of Maisie the puppy on Instagram. And I love to do jigsaw puzzles as a kind of a spiritual practice. It's meditative for me. And there's something about taking all those little pieces where it seems like you'll never figure it out and they all look the same and carefully, patiently, mindfully assembling a bigger picture that for, for me personally speaks to kind of what I'm trying to do with my spiritual practice. Can I bring the pieces together? Can I move through disorder calmly? So have a look at puzzles and puppies and podcasts at Fog City Psychic on Instagram. Now then, shamanic teaching seems especially relevant in these unusual times, it can feel like we're going through great change and yet we're not always clear on our direction. Well, my guest today is Itzhak Biri, and he says that ancient cultures foresaw the volatile events we're experiencing as a birthing process for a new future and a new human paradigm. Prophecies like the condor and the eagle from the high Andes of Ecuador and the meeting of the water from the native Brazilian Amazon inform Itzhak's perspective on what we're experiencing today. So are you ready to meet him? Itzhak Biri is a leading international shamanic teacher, healer, speaker, and community activist. He's the author of three best-selling books, including Shamanic Healing, Traditional Medicine for the Modern World. For nearly 30 years, Itzhak's been bridging the spiritual and practical wisdom his indigenous teachers entrusted to him with a contemporary approach that's relevant to our modern times. He leads groups on healing expeditions to the Andes and the Amazon of Ecuador and Yucatan. He's the founder of of shamanportal.org, the Andes Summit, and the co-founder of the New York Shamanic Circle. Itzhak's on the faculty of major spiritual centers, and he received the Ambassador for Peace Award from the Universal Peace Federation and the UN. There's a lot more to find out about Itzhak and his work, and you can find that at itzhakbiri.com. Itzhak, welcome to Out of the Fog. Well, thank you so much for having me, Karen. It's a really great pleasure and honor. I'm very glad you're here. I, what does it mean to you to be a shaman now in these times? I think that we want to take a look at uh, what, what is the original a proper uh, meaning of the word shaman that came from the Tungus tribe. Uh, because I think... Um, for many years, many people defined shamans in many different ways, like a, a wise person, a healer, or a person that fly between the worlds, uh, bring messages from spirit. But <clears throat> the Tungus word for saman is the keeper of the fire. And the keeper of the fire is really define what a shaman is. It's not just a person who know how to heal or to how to um, communicate or channel or bring information from other spirit world. It is the person that take care of the community, the well-being of the spiritual well-being, the emotional uh, well-being and the physical well-being. So it's it's a person who devote uh, his life for the betterment of others, the service to others. um, But it's it's not defining by 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 one aspect of the of the shamanic work. It is is the, the, that commitment to make other people's life better or dreams come true mm. that define a shaman. And I think that this is really what missing um, in our uh, conversation about shamanism today is that uh, the fact that I know how to drum and journey into my. Uh, our animal or spirit guide or my ancestors, that doesn't make me a shaman. My, my, what makes me a shaman is my commitment for other people's well-being. And I think that that is, if you accept that as, a, as, a, um, as the bottom line of what shamanism or sh- shamanic culture is, um, then 
and, and you take res uh, responsibility for that, then I think that that, um, that would make this world a lot better where our world today is all about me, 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 me. Hmm. Well, and that it's not, I, I think I'm hearing you say it's not about show off shamanism. Oh, no. it, it's about the, the connection to the community, to the work, to the path, to your part on the path that we are all walking together. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a commitment that a person uh, to become the pillar of society mm -hmm. and to make other people's life more harmonious and uh, to keep the stories, the legend, to keep the um, the tradition. Uh, to keep the the the, har the harmony and peace with uh, with each other, and if you look at the world today, I think that this is this role is so important because there is se a big segment of our culture that has nothing, don't even look at the at the value of community, the value of well-being for all being. Uh, there's so much um, greed and uh, fear of the changing times. Um, and the, the shamans, we have to, re to remind people that the well-being of an, each individual one is by the well-being of the whole community. And we have to be responsible for other people's life. Um, we can't really say that this not belong to us and like the, uh, the coronavirus uh, when they uh, showed us that, you know, it may start in one country, but it's spread around very rapidly. And it's the same thing about racism. It's, a, it's, all, it's a, the same thing about everything else that because of our the, the communication today. I know that you are aware of prophecies mm -hmm. that speak to the times we're in today and and as someone who has committed his life to being the pillar of the community to leading prophets and prophecies are not always well received and i'm wondering how it is how it feels to to speak truth into a time that where so many are resisting everything we don't know what truth is anymore you know, we are, we are now um, in the beginning of a new period of time. Uh, in the Inca tradition, it's called Pachacuti. And they count a time in lump sum of 500 years. These are a period of time. And in 1993, a new Pachacuti began. And that Pachacuti, according to um, the Inca tradition, is the Pachacuti where the eagle of the north and the condor of the south will fly in dance of harmony in the blue sky. That, that's our future. And it is at the time where uh, it is the return of the feminine energies back to our world. And if we remember 500 years before that, um, the Spaniard and other cultures from the Europe um, the armies went into um, South America to, to look for gold, to look for treasures. And they, in that way, they colonized uh, the South America, they butchered the, the old traditions. And it was really the, uh, the, um, the rule of the masculine energy. And now we are entering into a whole new period of time where um, the, it is the return of the feminine, as I said. And the people that are so benefited from the 500 years of occupation, of uh, stealing resources, uh, grabbing everything they can, with, and taking everything with power, with, with war, uh, the corporations, the religion, and all of that that is ruled by male energy, um, they are really fearful of losing their um, their resources mm. and giving room for a new period of time. 
<clears throat> we are now in the beginning, so it's only 30 years now that uh, this um, change is happening. And the more the people who are from the old regime, from the, from the old Pachakuti, realizing that they are going to be replaced, that they are, uh, a new period is coming, uh, the more vicious that they become, and or the more desperate that they become. And so we know where the river is flowing. We know that that's uh, the, fu the future. But so many people uh, were for so long benefiting from the rule of the masculine uh, energies that they are not willing to give, uh, give, away, give it away or give room for the new beginning. And so that's really where we are now. Uh, it is the fight between the masculine way of thinking or the eagle way of thinking and the feminine based uh, in condor uh, of way and how do we how do we cooperate how do we bring the two together we don't have to choose either one of them but we have to learn how to bring the two aspects of ourselves the caring the loving the intuitive uh, the compassionate, the empathic, <clears throat> together with action. This is the challenge of our time. Do you believe that these two uh, principles, these two ways of being, coexist in in each of us? I feel like we we as individuals can't be all one or all the other, even if, and it resonates with me so strongly, even if we have been in this masculine way of grabbing everything we can get and fighting off anyone who disagrees with us. And now we're holding on as tight as we can in fear. How, mm -hmm. how can we shift into that more feminine way of, of looking at things um, in a, in a gentle way so that we don't have to go through all this, what feels to me like the death throes of the, of the old way of doing things where we just burn it all down and freak out before we can have something new. I believe that these two different energies exist within each of us mm -hmm. as a role for the shamans, for the shaman or the healer. All we do is we are trying to bring, the balance between them and i'm not when i'm talking about the white male domination of uh, <clears throat> of our of our world uh, it's not necessarily only white male it could be also a female who have a lot more masculine energy of course or women who depress their femininity in order to live in a masculine world and the other side is also true that is a, there's a lot of masculine a lot of men who have a lot of strong masculinity they are afraid to express their feminine side of themselves and so the, that flight of the condor and the eagle is not necessarily uh, to choose between either masculine or feminine it is the harmony or the flight be, the the flight of harmony between the two of them or living in uh, harmony with the masculine part of you, the action part of you, the logical, the, the ego part of it, and the other part, which is compassion, intuitiveness, taking care of other people. The two of them together, really what makes uh, the new Pachakuti so exciting. Um, and I, hope that uh, we will be here to see it soon. Is that the transition is happening now? Mm -hmm. Is do you have a feeling about mm, what happens next? How we move through this transition? Will we be here to see it? Well, the last Pachakuti uh, took about 80 years for it to to not i'm not saying complete but the transition part of it to take roots 
So I believe that we are only in the very beginning of time. I don't know if I would be able to uh, be here when all of that uh, will happen. But I think that we, we can already see some of it, some signs of it. For instance, today we have a lot more women that represent the feminine, the family part uh, in the Congress and Senate. We have more women now running governments in, in different countries. Uh, women voices are heard. And at the same time, there is a lot of resistance from the others, from the masculine side or from the eagle part and try to create rules against that. But you know, the, the, the train left, the train left the station. There are some people who are trying to stop the train from, for, from going, but that's uh, the way I see it. And that's what makes me so um, optimistic is that the trains will get to where it needs to go, no matter how many people will start uh, try to stop it. And maybe here we, uh, you, we can talk about the meeting of the rivers, the two rivers that are in the Amazon um, yes. near Manaus. Um, I was there for quite a few years, um, and uh, uh, I was taken by uh, my teacher, Ipupiara, to meet that place uh, where the Rio Negro, the, the Black River, meet the Red River, the Amazon. And the, it is a, f um, uh, a, a flow of two different rivers like the condor and the eagle each one of them has a different energy different uh sediment different ph uh acidity uh different uh, temperature and they all uh come to get, come from different uh cultures from different places but they all merging in one place that's called the meeting of the water mm -hmm. and they bring with them all the sediments the, the leaves the the trees, the, the, um, the garbage that they collect together, and they create islands that they are in that meeting. That is a very uh, sacred place for the Manaus tribes because they believe that uh, the two, the, when two cultures merge, um, they don't merge all at once. The river there, um, or the, the two rivers are trying to merge the pH, the, 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 the temperatures, whatever they bring, the fish. But it takes them miles and miles and miles and miles to swim side by side until the two waters can become one river. Mm. And I, I think that if we think about where we are now, where the old time is gasping their last breath and the new one is still not very sure of where where are we going to be and we really need to learn how to swim side by side how to flow and how how do, how do we manage to merge with each other to weave uh, each of our dreams or wishes or qualities until we become one big river that flow into the ocean into the infinite. Mm. You're listening to Out of the Fog. I'm talking with Itzhak Berry. He's the author of three best-selling books, including Shamanic Healing, Traditional Medicine for the Modern World. You can find out more about Itzhak and his work, the, um, the uh, travel that he leads and other things at itzhakberry.com. That's I-T-Z-H-A-K-B-E-E-R-Y.com, itzhakberry.com. That idea of the rivers coming together and it and it taking time to flow feels reassuring to me i have um one of my parents is diametrically opposed it, uh in his political and other views and one of the things i hear from him all the time is this is it this is the end this is the end of everything it's over it's mm -hmm. urgent it's this is and i feel I feel more like someone flowing down the river and coming on maybe an island of garbage or a place where the, <laughs> where the mix of sediment is not, is not working very well. But it feels to me more like the, the beginning of everything. 
Is this the beginning of everything? I think it's a it's a very exciting beginning of everything because I, I think that uh, maybe my children or maybe my grandchildren uh, will will live in a whole different world. I, I think that uh, you know when when you have a world that is ruled by power, by greed, by fear that I'm not going to have enough, that you know uh, uh, competition about resources. Um, and this is ingrained in our DNA for 500 years now, or 530 years now. Uh, the, the people who at the head of these corporations and religions and um, other institutions, they would not really give it up very easily. But I think that the, 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 the earth is shifting under them. We all understand now the veil more people now see or recognizing the veil they can see through it mm -hmm. they see the um the, what corporations and religions are doing that they are separating that they're creating division between people instead of uniting them we all grew up on ideas of spirituality that we are all one and that we are all the same that god created a, a human being in 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 his uh, in his shape we all want that. I think that we all, as human beings, I think that we all want to be good. We don't want to go to war and kill each other. We don't want to have people who are worth trillions of dollars and people who don't have a, a, even a dollar. Yeah. We want a better world. And the world is, is so magnificent and it's so beautiful. And it's with abundance that can provide for everybody without fear of not having enough. Um, it is so old, the idea that, um, of, of scarcity. It's, all, it's so old to, f to live in fear. And I, I can't really understand why people want to, be, to continue the war machines and uh, the corporate greed uh, instead of sharing and creating uh, a better world. Like, and that's the, really what the, the prophecy of the condor and the eagle is, is to take the, the know-how of the, of the Western world, the, 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 the science, the technology, uh, all the achievement that we have, and uh, including medicine, and cooperate with the world of the south which is bringing more of the sensibility the the love of the earth the taking care of the earth uh the way to take care of of nature uh the, the tribal uh, uh responsibility i think that if we can bring the two together which is where the two rivers will come at the end we will merge it um, i think that the, the future could be exciting but I think that we are really right now uh, in the eye of the storm. We can't really see behind. And I think that that's what I think is so important to talk about it, is to give people the perspectiveness of that so people would not be so disillusioned, so dis desperate and um, frightened. And it's part of what I think of the relevance of shamanic teaching it's that vision it's holding a vision that's mm, holding a vision that's bigger than what i as an individual mm -hmm. person can see that's and, right and i'm hearing you as a as a healer say no one of us really wants to create harm cause division grab at things fight it feels like this time that we're going through this place where the rivers come together, the place where we're in that transition feels like it's um, at a time when if we will, if we can allow it, if we can kind of calm ourselves down a little bit, gentle down that fear, we can move forward together, not just the in quotes, good guys and the in quotes, bad guys fight each other. And then the good guys win. And then we move, or the good guys move forward. I'm hearing you say no one wants, really wants destruction. You know, I think, I believe in the goodness of people. And I believe that uh, each of us have a soul that wants to be uh, loved and that it wants to be with the light or they want to 
I don't think that anybody is born with the, that their soul wanted to dominate other people or to create suffering for other people. I think it is a, it's, a, it's, it's not uh, uh, an innate nature of a human being. So I think that uh, our suffering comes from our, from our soul yearning to be loved and to love and to be a whole. And that is all by taking care of other people and to be recognized too as a, as a being, a good being. But I think where, where it's at now is that there's so many people motivated by big corporations that so fear that they lose sight of who they really are as human being. And it, it brings us to the question of uh, good and evil, of course, because uh, the definition of good and evil is that the good energies of the world is energy that promote life, promote f the flow of life, like the river that flows undisturbedly throughout life. And the, the, the evil or the negative energies are energy that wants to stop the flow of the river, mm. to stop the flow of life. And these two forces are, uh, are fighting with, between each other for, from the beginning of time. The, so the more we can hold that vision of goodness and of um, peace and harmony and the changing or the return of the feminine energy into this masculine dominating world, uh, the more uh, optimism, the more, the more peace will be around the world. I wonder if you have a suggestion for daily practices, things that we can do while we're in the thick of it, while this uh, transition is going on, are there things we can do daily to remind ourselves of that goodness, of the goodness of the world and our place in it, uh, to remind ourselves of that compassion and gratitude that we carry? I, I think that my practice is, is really quite simple is asking myself with everything that I do, if what I do promote the life force of other people or is it stop them? Mm -hmm. And I think that every decision that you make, you have to want, you, you want to ask yourself, does it promote your partner life or does it stop it? Does it, if, if I work if I do something at work, does it really promote life for other people around the world? Or is it take advantage of them for profit and they will suffer from it? Every action, I think that that is very important to, to bring it into the consciousness. Every word you say, every act, act you, you act, does it promote life or is it stopping life? That, that is the most important thing to, to do uh, in your daily life. But it, as a ceremony, I think that you, what you might want to do is the, if you stand up and you feel like your roots, uh, your, your legs are the roots to the earth, <clears throat> and your head is um, the top of the tree that, uh, that collect the energy of the sun. So we're talking about the two parts. The, the earth is the mother, the, the feminine energy, the sun is the masculine energy, or Tata Inti. Um, and it, I do that with other people, and you can do that too, is, is to, if you stand like a tree with your roots deep into the earth and um, bringing the energy of the magma or the, the passion energy of, of the mother into your heart, and at the same time, you bring the energy of the sun, the, the masculine energy into your heart. 
and you bring it this combustion of the two together that's the 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 masculine and the feminine meet in the heart and then from the heart to 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 project it out into the world so you don't project the feminine energy or you don't project the masculine energy you project the two of them the merging of the two together and you're surrounding the world with good beautiful loving energy that bring life to all that is a practice of in in meditation that you can do and if you do that often and you you start to feel that you are the source that that this that the energy of the sun and the energy of the the earth coming from your heart you are the source that activate the world and when you do that when you send that love light to all being on this earth then you can do harm or create suffering for others it's beautiful and it's it's practices like that that reconnect us with who we really are not who we're mm-hmm. pretending to be or who we think we ought to be or who we think someone else looking in from outside would think that we would practices like that bring us into the heart of who we are and from that place from the heart of who we are then we can do good or shine light create life in the world Mm. yes that's beautiful absolutely is there a message i know we're just about at the end of our time is there a message you especially want to share with the listeners i think that the message that i'd like is that the message that we started our conversation is what is a shaman and i and um ipupiara my teacher from uh, the brazilian amazon i used to say that uh, we are all shamans, all human beings have the DNA or the innate talents to become a shaman. Because to become a shaman is about survival. It's about helping other people, communities and yourself and your families to survive. And to survive, you really have to have a spiritual well-being, emotional well-being and physical well-being. And you have to have the uh, the talent of or the ability to dream, to vision, uh, to sing, to hug, to give somebody a glass of water, to comfort someone, and that's all what shamans do. So the message is that we are all shamans. We all have what it takes to be a shaman, and and it doesn't mean that you have to be professionally doing it, but it's important that all human beings recognize that they are healers and they have to take responsibility about it because mm-hmm. healer cannot really hurt other people and the more we recognize as a, as a human species that we are healers here on this earth uh, making sure that other people life is is is, is lives in harmony and with a full potential, then we can't hurt other other people. So I encourage people to take the role and to make the to make the commitment. Yes. In in every in every choice. In every choice, does it help other people to promote their life, or does it hurt it? If it hurt, don't do that. Itzhak, thank you so much for taking the time to share the prophecies and this message. It feels to me like a message of hope and I am grateful for this connection. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's very a pleasure to be here with you. I've been talking with Itzhak Biri. He is the author of best-selling books, including Shamanic Healing, Traditional Medicine for the Modern World. You can find out more about Itzhak and his work, including the fifth annual Andes Summit, which is a chance to meet shamans from Ecuador virtually. All that information is at itzhakbiri.com. I'm going to spell it for you. I-T-Z-H-A-K-B. 
E-E-R-Y-Itzakbiri.com. And you're always welcome at KarenHager.com. That's a great place to find out about upcoming classes and events. And you can even book a private intuitive session there if you are so inclined. If you are feeling into your healing heart, if you are looking for ways to deepen your practice, to soften the way that you rub up against a world that can that can feel harsh, that can maybe mm, seem like it's leading you in, a, in ways that don't allow your intuition. I'd love to talk to you and see if we could put a flashlight on that so that you can step into your true kind healing path. That's all at karenhager.com. And if you follow Fog City Psychic on Instagram, you get podcast stuff, you get Maisie the puppy, and you get puzzles um, whenever I decide to post them. So you're welcome to follow Fog City Psychic on Instagram. Thank you for listening today. Together we are spreading a little more light in the world, and a little more light is always a good thing. Until next time, I'm wishing you peace.